What's the matter? Nothing, it's just, ever since that cinematic mode video came out, no one at work wants to talk to me. And I even heard a rumor that they were thinking of sending me to the People's Republic. Oh. It's like, yeah, like to a place with nets around it. They're sending you to a basketball court? I think so. Well, is there anything you can do to win them back? Yeah, you need to delete your cinematic mode video. Ooh, um, yeah, I'm on this new no delete YouTube. What? I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's new. It's a new thing that YouTube have, have just rolled out uh, just this week, actually. So, yeah, uh, sorry about that, Ethan. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go film my Apple ProRes video. It's nice talking to you. Can I be in it? You already are. Pro Res video on the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. Um, uh, yeah. This is kind of awkward because I don't know anything about it, honestly. I don't even know how to introduce it. So today I'm literally just gonna walk around, shoot with it, compare it to some other formats and see what's what. Okay, I do know some things. For example, if you have a 128 gigabyte model, iPhone 13 Pro or Pro Max, then you are limited to 1080p to a maximum of 30 frames per second, where if you have a model with a larger storage, then you can shoot 4K 60. But the stock iPhone camera app is not the whole ProRes story because now third party camera apps have started getting in on it. At the time of recording, it's bloody cold and I'm aware that Filmic Pro, Pro Camera and Pro Cam 8 also offer ProRes video. And of course with apps like those, you can uh, choose your exposure settings, your white balance and your frame rate and things like that. So I'm really keen to see how those third party apps compare to the stock camera app. I'm also really keen to warm myself up. For starters, both Filmic Pro and Pro Camera allow you to choose which variant of ProRes you want to shoot. You've got ProRes Proxy, which is the most compressed, all the way up to ProRes HQ, which is the least compressed. And you can see the maximum recording time in Filmic Pro change as you cycle through each one. Filmic Pro also lets you choose between ProRes 709 and ProRes 2020. So having a look here, ProRes 709, is a variable bitrate 422 video compression format, the encoding and color, blah, 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 blah. And ProRes 2020, if we take a look, is a variable bitrate 422 video compression format. The transfer function is something hybrid log gamma. The color primaries and YCBCR matrix? In plain English, for non-technical folk like me, this is essentially Filmic Pro's way of saying HDR on or off. And you can also turn HDR on or off in the stock camera app, Pro Camera and Pro Cam 8. But speaking of Pro Cam 8, it lets me do something extra special because even though I have a 128 gigabyte iPhone 13 Pro Max, Pro Cam 8 lets me shoot ProRes in glorious 4K. Not only that, it also has this 4K Max option, which increases the resolution from, bear with me, from 3840 by 2160 to 4032 by 2268. So you get an extra 850,176 pixels of resolution. 
So, in our talk, how do these variants of ProRes compare? Can you actually see any difference between them and are they all superior to H.264 and H.265? Well, um, no, they're not. ProRes Proxy looks so bad it makes me think I've done something wrong. Why would this even be made available as a shooting option when it looks this bad? If you look at the little info cards that I put in the corners of each clip here, you'll see just how much larger the ProRes proxy files are than iOS H.265 and how much higher the bitrate is. These numbers also make it around twice the size of standard iOS 4K files, but I really don't know why. I'm used to a larger file size and a higher bitrate to mean better quality, so if someone wouldn't mind telling me what I'm missing, then that would be great. Standard ProRes files though do look a lot better. In this low light example, the ProRes is more detailed than the H.265, but along with that extra detail also comes all of this in the shadows. What do you even call that? Can you get rid of it? Again, is this just me not knowing what to do here, or is this just how it is? Finally, we have ProRes HQ. This is the variant of ProRes that Apple's stock camera app uses, and you can see why. We're definitely a far cry from ProRes Proxy. The files are much cleaner, and you can actually edit them without completely turning them to mush. But despite this obvious improvement, I'm still looking at them next to iOS standard HEVC files, and I'm like, why are these ProRes files so big? You've got 10 seconds of 1080p H.265 coming in at a svelte 7 megabytes and 5 megabits per second. Whereas 10 seconds of 1080p ProRes HQ is a whopping 225 megabytes and a massive 171 megabits per second. But why? Can you actually tell which is the H.265 file and the ProRes file? And if you can, if you genuinely think the ProRes looks better, does it look 220 more megabytes every 10 seconds better? And the added onus of this ProRes thing being amazing and justifying its obnoxious file sizes is the fact that we're arbitrarily and kind of patronizingly limited to 1080p. What's the point of shooting ProRes at 1080p when I can shoot standard iOS 4K at a fraction of the file size and get a better result? For me, ProRes just feels like this big, fat, white elephant of a feature, and it's just another reason to stick with your iPhone 12 Pro or 12 Pro Max. But there is one thing that could salvage ProRes on the 128GB 13 Pro and Pro Max models and rescue it from pointlessness, and that is the fact that ProCam can shoot it in 4K and 4K Max. I honestly wasn't even gonna make a video on ProRes. I had no interest whatsoever in ProRes until I saw the fact that ProCam could shoot it in 4K. I initially thought you could shoot it in 4K in Pro Camera as well. So I spent like half a day walking around shooting 4K in Pro Camera. What I thought was ProRes, but it wasn't. It was um, H.265. So uh, yeah, never mind. It is limited to 1080p. Anyway, here is a 1080p ProRes HQ file shot with the stock iPhone camera app. And here, in all of its 4K max glory, weighing in at a staggering 702 megabytes for just 10 seconds of footage, and with a gigantic 533 megabits per second bitrate, is ProRes in ProCam. And it looks... worse <clears throat> um while the resolution and therefore the fine detail isn't as high the prores hq files actually look better than the 4k max prores files and the standard 4k prores files that you get from procam this might be in part due to the fact that you can't shoot in prores hq you can only shoot in like standard ProRes 422, which as we've seen, isn't as good. But this 4K ProRes and 4K Max ProRes Max isn't just up against the ProRes posse. 
it's also up against 8-bit H.265 4K. This is what I shoot all the time. And if we bring in an 8-bit 4K file from Beastcam, well, look at it. It looks fantastic. This is the most excited I've been all video. Compared to the 4K ProRes on paper, this Beastcam file should be nothing. But look at it. It looks great, meaning I shall forever ignore ProRes on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. So tell me, please, seriously, am I completely wrong about this? Like, what am I missing? Is it just me not being technical enough, not having that knowledge to appreciate ProRes? Am I doing something wrong? Am I missing a step? Am I missing something? Just like, please <laughs> educate me. I want to know because I want to use all the features on my fancy new iPhone 13 Pro Max. I mean, this thing cost me over a grand, so I don't want it to be filled with these white elephant features like cinematic mode and ProRes. I actually want something new that I can use that my 12 Pro didn't have. And so far, the only thing that I've found for me personally is macro on the ultra wide, and that's it. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping someone can, can help me justify my investment in the, in the 13 Pro Max. Anyway, I'm gonna play you out with a B-roll montage of ProRes mixed in with that Pro Camera H.265 footage that I shot accidentally thinking it was ProRes. And again, it's like one final test. If, if you think, um, if you think I'm wrong, or maybe you, you don't think I'm wrong, maybe you agree with me, just watch this montage and tell me if you can actually see the difference and spot the difference between these shots. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll try and be more positive <laughs> next time. <laughs> Schneider den Peckerland.